So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. Hey everybody, welcome to another great episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Rachel. And I'm Drew. And today we're at the Fakahatchee Strand Preserve State Park in Copeland, Florida. We're going to find out what makes this swamp such a crucial ecosystem and explore the plants and animals that live here. Alright, well let's go into the swamp and see what we can find. Sounds good, after you. Alright. Well guys, today you have entered the world's largest strand swamp. We call it the Fakahatchee Strand Preserve State Park. What makes it a strand? Well, strand swamps are basically elongated channels or very shallow valleys in the limestone. They've been eroded by carbonic acid and rainfall over thousands of years. Makes these valleys and they're filled with organic leaves, so they call it muck. It's a sponge-filled valley. Huh. Huh. So if this is a swamp, then where's the water? Mm, that's a good question, Drew. Uh, because the wetlands of the Everglades are actually determined by seasonally flowing water and seasonally fluctuating water levels, there are times of the year when there's no water above surface. Oh. So this is kind of normal. Hmm. So Mike, what is the purpose of the swamp? Well, the actual function of strand swamps like the Fakahatchee is first of all the dimensions. It's 22 miles long, wow. three to five miles wide, about three to six feet deep. So this is a limestone valley. I call it the Grand Canyon of the Everglades. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been eroded chemically over thousands of years by naturally occurring acids and rainfall. Hmm. And that's what's created this muck-filled valley. And the muck got here by all the leaves for thousands of years dropping into the water. And the leaves don't decompose very quickly because they're underwater. And that prevents the oxygen and the bacteria and the protozoa from decomposing them very rapidly. So we're walking on top of a three to six foot deep sponge filled limestone wow. valley. Wow, must have taken a long <laughs> <Pretty> time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you keep saying muck, is that the actual scientific name? That's the actual term. It's organic soil that took thousands of years. It's just leaves that have been falling into the water over the past few centuries. And they're partially decomposed. They decompose very slowly because they're wet for so long. So muck is the actual term. <laughs> so how old is the swamp? Well, the Everglades has been dated at right around 6,000 years old. Wow. So we're walking on top of a 6,000-year-old sponge-filled limestone valley when you're in wow. the back of Hatchie Strand. And another key function of the Everglades is what we call seasonally fluctuating water levels. Hmm. And all that means is by about September or early October, the water reaches its maximum depth. And you can kind of tell where the lichens start and the sponges end right about where that mean annual high water is. And right now it's underwater, or the ground, the underground anyway, the water is below ground surface. Mm -hmm. That happens every year in April, May, first part of June too. So this is normal to have the water go underground seasonally. We're also in a drought. That's also kind of normal too, because the Everglades over the past 6,000 years has definitely seen its share of, dr of droughts. What happens to all the plants and animals during a drought? Ooh, that is a great question. Well, every year, the Everglades ecosystem undergoes a seasonal drought. Remember, the uh, whole Everglades functions on seasonally fluctuating water levels, peaking around September, October, bottoming out around April, May, early part of June. So the Everglades is kind of dependent upon that seasonal drought. But this year, we're actually undergoing a real drought. It's a little extended or a prolonged period of below average rainfall. But those prolonged droughts can actually be beneficial ecologically. How so? Because a lot of times, the trees get started in these deep water systems only during a prolonged drought. The little seedlings that otherwise get drowned out during the high water that's coming in September, where it might get two or three feet deep in these sloughs. So even droughts, though they might be bad for us, can actually be good or beneficial ecologically. And you said that alligators will actually create a hole like a den in the muck right. when there's a drought. Right, the gator holes, they, they call the alligator the keeper of the Everglades because the activity of the alligator wallowing out the muck creates a little pond and eventually gets expanded over years and creates a gator hole. And all kinds of fish and crayfish and shrimp can live in there, including frogs and tadpoles. So the gator has his food right there too, but it's a refuge for all these aquatic organisms, including the alligator. So they are the keeper of the Everglades. When we return, we'll scale to new heights with epiphytes. 